how do we build a comprehensive bone health program? This is a question that we get a lot. And this is why we run our masterclass. This is why we have our HealthSpan Nation is to help people to do this. But I thought it would be helpful for me to run through how we build a program from the ground up and see if this will help you to identify any big holes that you might be missing in your program. So in today's video, we're going to go through our health optimization pyramid, but we're just really going to do this in broad strokes so that you can understand the big pieces to make sure that you are considering those in your own program. Please keep in mind that I'm not giving medical advice. I'm just talking about how we build this program so that you can do this on your own with your own medical team. Okay, so what you're looking at here is our health optimization pyramid. And we're not gonna go through all the different sections of this, but what I wanna point out here is that the primary thing, the most important thing that you can do as you're starting to create your own program is to focus on the pillars of health. So these pillars of health, as we have them listed here, are nutrition, exercise, sleep, social connection, mindset, and spiritual health. If you don't take care of these, if you don't create a healthy body, the supplementation, the hormones, the peptides, and even the drugs, are not going to have a significant impact, or at least not for very long. And so this is one of the biggest things I see in people who are either in the traditional medical model, they're using drugs, or they're working with an integrative doctor, a functional doctor, or whatever, um, and they're supplementing their way out of it, or they're hormoning their way out of it, is they're not focusing on the six pillars of health. They're not focusing on the lifestyle. And without that, nothing else flies. So let's talk about the lifestyle then. So the reason why we have that, that pyramid built the way we do, and the reason why we start from left and go right, or at least in this country, um, is that we want to start with nutrition. We want to start with exercise. We spend so much time talking about these two things because they're so important. From a nutrition perspective, I have entire videos on this. So the broad stroke here is this needs to be protein forward. It needs to get adequate protein, preferably from animal sources. And we need anti-inflammatory diet that has all of the micronutrients and macronutrients nutrients that we need. Now, this is going to vary widely from person to person. Uh, so again, I have an entire video on that uh, that you can watch when we're done. I think it's called the uh, uh, Best Diet for Osteoporosis 2024 Update. And then there's exercise. Now, there are so many different ways to exercise. There's so many different people buying for your time and for your dollars. And I totally understand that. The literature is very clear. If you want to improve your bone, you need to do two things. One is resistance training, which is actually for your muscles, not for your bone. And the second is impact. Impact, whether you're doing heel drops, box jumps, you're doing simulated impact like osteogenic loading or whole body vibration, you have to do some kind of impact. Otherwise, your bones don't have the stimulus to grow. You could eat all the protein and take all the testosterone, all the estrogen in the world. You're not going to grow bone if you don't stimulate those bones to grow. Now, when it comes to other things like yoga, Pilates, walking, cycling, all those things, there is value in arguably probably every form of exercise. Uh, I would avoid anything that's going to put you at high risk of getting injured, but there's probably value in all of it, but not all of it's going to grow a bone. The primary things, resistance training, impact, all the other stuff for other aspects of health span, which are important. They're just not going to grow a bone. So don't forget that. And then there's sleep. So sleep is critical. Now, hear me, my postmenopausal women that are watching this channel. If you're struggling with sleep and you're not on hormone replacement therapy, there is a big tool there that you may be missing. If you look at the symptoms of menopause, many of them are more than hot flashes and night sweats. So please consider talking to someone about hormone replacement therapy. We have options for that with Pema Bioidentical. If you haven't seen that, you can check that out. Um, but having a discussion about whether or not you're a good candidate for hormone replacement therapy is critical if you're struggling with sleep, energy, body composition, bone, and on and on and on and on. So sleep's really important. Lifestyle around sleep is really important. Coaching around sleep can be really helpful, but getting eight hours of sleep, which usually means a nine hour window for sleep is what I would recommend. And it's what I do personally. And it's what we're telling a lot of our patients to do. The next section is social connection. Now this one is really important. And this really became an issue during the pandemic. We saw a lot of people get socially isolated and um, many of them stayed that way. We see this as a way for people to decline quickly. So we are social creatures. We need to interact with people. And it's not through this. It's not through a Zoom meeting. It's better than nothing, but we need to get out. We need to communicate. We need to interact. So please get out, connect with people, go do something fun, have some kind of social connection. Mindset is critical. Mindset is our fifth uh, pillar of health. And mindset is not only the mindset of 
I can do this. It's this hurdle to get over that says that I don't necessarily need drugs. I can do this on my own. I can build a program. I can support myself. And then it's the daily accountability, the daily, I'm going to get this done today. I'm going to check off all these boxes. That's a very hard mindset to stay in for a lot of people. And again, having some accountability, having some coaching there can be, be critical and helpful. Spiritual health is something, you know, we talk about a little bit in our program. This is something that people are either on a really great path on or something that they need. I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about the battle there, but there is a need, a drive for humans to have some kind of meaning and understanding in life. Uh, and if you don't have that meaning, spiritual growth can really help. And so for whatever that means for you, and if you don't have that, I would encourage you to pursue it. So then once we go through those pillars of health, we find that people are on a much better path. So then all the things that we're going to recommend are going to have better impact. So then you could talk about something like supplementation. So people love supplements that have osteoporosis. Uh, and maybe that's a, uh, maybe a too bold of way to say that, but I think it's interesting that a lot of people with osteoporosis are trying not to use drugs, but they're very willing to use supplements. And there is a bigger, better safety profile, but I would encourage you to make sure that you're optimizing those pillars of health first before you start leaning on the supplements. I'm not saying supplements are bad. We certainly use them and we have some that we recommend, but make sure that you're using the supplements that are right for you. So supplements for, uh, from our perspective are going to be biomarker driven. So we're going to look at your blood. We're going to look at your functional testing and decide what do you specifically you need. If we have genetics, we're going to use genetics too to help. And so understanding what those biomarkers are is really critical. Um, and uh, our, our Bone Foundations course walks through that. Uh, you can access that through our website. And then on top of supplementation, then becomes hormones. Now, this is a very tricky conversation because many people listening to this are probably in the age group where they're over 10 years out from menopause and they've been told that they can't take HRT. Hear me. It is possible for many, many women, probably not all, but many women over 10 years out from menopause to start hormone replacement therapy, especially if they have osteoporosis. Any discussion around hormone replacement therapy should be a risk benefit analysis. And if you have a disease state, which is what osteoporosis is considered, if you have a disease state that would benefit from hormone replacement therapy, then the, it changes the risk benefit analysis. And so we start lots of women on hormone replacement therapy who are over 10 years out from menopause and certainly within 10 years from menopause. So uh, this is a discussion that needs to be had, but please understand that estrogen by itself is helpful for osteoporosis and FDA approved for osteoporosis for that matter. Testosterone and progesterone are not FDA approved, but can be used off label for the right circumstances to help with bones. Testosterone will have an impact on bone. It's shown in the literature. Progesterone has an impact on bone. It's shown in the literature. We see it very clearly. So using the right combination of hormone replacement therapy is critical. But here's some other relatively controversial components to this. A lot of doctors like to use as low a dose as possible. So they're looking to relieve the symptoms of menopause, which for most doctors and most patients are going to include only hot flashes and night sweats. Hot flashes and night sweats respond to low doses of estrogen but unfortunately your bones generally don't. So there are receptors in bones, receptors in all tissues, but in different tissues, the receptors are going to respond at different levels. So we need to get closer to physiologic levels to have an impact on bone but then we run into an issue. So we can only go so high with what's called static dose, even the same dose every time. And so we have to really push the limits of that without going too high and then working with a provider that understands what those limits are, how to measure what's happening with those limits, et cetera. Beyond that, then we start getting into the realm of physiologic dosing, truly driving estrogen levels higher. Then we start talking about cyclic progesterone, and that is a conversation to have with a provider that understands how they're doing that. We do do that, and we see that some women who are struggling with their bone health do respond to that. So different levels of care. Hormone replacement therapy is not one size fits all. Okay, so then the next level beyond that, we start getting into peptides and drugs. Before I get there, though, please understand that most people, even in our practice, which is comprehensive care, most people will stop at that point. We don't generally get into the peptide space or the drug space because once you get there, A, you're overwhelmed, uh, but B, you have all the tools that you need. And we see that most people respond here. So lifestyle, biomarker targeted supplementation, hormone optimization, it's going to work for most people. 
no peptides that are specifically for osteoporosis. There are no FDA approved peptides at all that aren't pharmaceuticals. Uh, but when you're using a peptide, you're using a peptide in the space that is around optimizing health span. You can see these things have an impact on muscle mass, on energy, ability to lift weights, et cetera. So they're going to work through the growth hormone pathway, IGF-1 pathway. Uh, these are icing on the cake, kind of controversial tools that are fun to play with if you want to play with them. Um, and then drugs, we almost never prescribe drugs in our program. Our goal is generally to optimize bone health without them. And we have needed pharmaceuticals or even recommended pharmaceuticals. I can think of three cases uh, over the hundreds of patients that we've treated. So we generally aren't prescribing drugs. There's a time and a place for all the drugs, but for the most part, we're not prescribing them because we're doing this without them. All right, so that's it. That's how we put together a program. So many of these things you can do on your own. So remember our framework around this, the 4R framework. You want to A, recognize why you're losing bone, and then B, create a program around um, reversing those causes of bone loss. So recognize, reverse, and then retest to make sure you're headed in the right direction, and then ultimately revive your life and live without the fear of fracture. So if you're looking for help, especially in the first R, which we didn't really talk about here, you needed to know why you're losing bone, consider joining our HealthSpan Nation. HealthSpan Nation is our community where people are helping each other. They are asking questions, delivering answers, sharing stories of success and failure, working with a group like that, a group that is like-minded, who is driving towards success is a really powerful tool. Within that group, we also do weekly uh, topic-driven Q&A, and then we have a, a, a vault of all the previous uh, topics that's been broken down into a searchable uh, pathway. Uh, then we also offer discounts, the same discounts we offer to our patients, we offer to our HSN community. And the, uh, man, the amount of money that you save off of those discounts for products you're gonna likely use anyway is gonna cover the cost of the community. So no reason why all of you shouldn't be in that community supporting each other and helping each other grow. You can learn more about that by going to optimalhumanhealth.com slash programs and look for the HealthSpan Nation in there. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you in the next video.